Hey guys, let's take a look at uh, what's called abstract fractional equations. It's like a, one of the worst names of a chapter in the world. Whoa. Like there's nothing good about any of the, one of those three words at all. It doesn't seem like anyway. You know what? We'll take lemons and make something out of it. It sure ain't gonna be lemonade anyway. We'll try. It. We'll try to get through this. Shouldn't be that bad. Okay, let's go to an oldie. Go ahead and pause your. Uh, look at the screen and write down this equation. Go ahead and solve for x. Pause it and go ahead and solve for x. All right, you should have knocked over, uh, I'll start with you again, the y will be minus y. This negative 6 turns into positive 6, okay? You solve for x, you divide by 2. You can write it like this if you want to, like this is your answer. And in the back of the book, they might have, you know, a half m minus a half y plus you know, 6 divided by 2, which is 3. That might be your answer as well. But that's the solving for x. You don't even know what that really is, but by solving, we mean get x by itself on one side, positive 1x, one and everything else to the other side. So, all right, let's take a look at something else we've done before. What's the method on doing this? We won't actually go ahead and do all the entire thing. What's the method? Is you go, okay, I'm going to put this over a 1. I'm going to go ahead and multiply the entire thing by... You know, uh, the common denominator, get rid of those, have a bunch of integers and x's and so on, and then boom, solve it. Okay, that's the way we do it. Okay, so let's actually, we're going to solve this fractional or abstract fractional equation. And let's go ahead and pause it and copy this down. And we're going to solve for x. And the method of doing this is, uh, since first off, since these are, you know, fractional equations, we don't want fractional equations. We want all numbers in the numerator and everything, ugh, no fractions. So what we're going to have to do is go ahead and multiply all the way through, and I'll just treat this as a c over 1, as we're going to multiply by the common denominator, which is x times a. Okay. Now let's go ahead and do this one first. And if we multiply this by x a and divide by x, that means we're actually multiplying by a, and a times a is a squared because the x's cancel out, all right? Plus, and we're done. Let's do this one now. If we multiply x a, I mean, divide by a, we're actually, since the a's cancel out, we're multiplying by x. So x times m is xm, all right? The last one is going to be x a times c, okay? We're going to solve for x, though. So what we need to do is move all the x's, I'm going to move them all to the left, and move everything else without an x to the right. So I'm going to keep my xm the way it is. I'm going to move the xac over here, and I'm going to move my a squared over to the right, which turns into negative a squared. Now, I'll divide by x. It, by the way, the way to look at this is, this is similar to an equation that has this, um, you know, two times, you know, let's say, uh, you know, uh, you know what? Never mind. We'll, we'll just hold off right now. We're gonna we're gonna get rid of everything uh, except for the x. So we'll divide x. Uh, excuse me. Both of these terms by x and see what we have left. So that's an m minus an ac, and that's gonna equal negative a squared still. And the last thing we do, and let's go. We'll we'll look at this one this way. This is x times something equals something. This is almost like saying you know. 2 times x equals 10. Well, to solve this, you just divide by what's being multiplied by x on both sides. Well, the same thing is true here. If x is being multiplied by something, to get rid of that and to get x by itself, you simply divide by m minus ac. So that's going to be m minus ac. And this is gone. You have your x. This is your answer. Now, just a reminder. If you look in the back of the book, and they have this as an answer instead. You might go, oh no, this is all messed up. My answer is not the same as theirs. Or maybe mom's checking your answers. She goes, what? And then you just starts hitting you or whatever, you know, or throwing stuff at you or whatever, you know, lavender oil and so on. Uh, you can tell her, mom, wait, hold on, as the bottles are hitting you in the head, you know. Look at this. The opposite of a squared, no, excuse me, the opposite of negative a squared is a squared. The opposite of m is negative m. The opposite of negative ac is positive ac. If all the terms are exact opposites of what they have in the, in the back of the book as the answer, you're good. That's exactly the same answer as they get. Okay. All right. Pause and copy again. 
and we're going to solve for m, and I'm going to go ahead and stick this over 1 first. And we will go ahead and multiply again by the common denominator. What is it? You tell me, what's the common denominator? m times a, right? Okay. Well, let's do this one first. m a times x over m. Well, the m's cancel, so you just have a x. This one, nothing cancels. You have m a c. This one, the, uh, the a's cancel, so you have a's cancel out, so that is going to equal m. And we're going to solve for m. So let's go ahead and keep m a c on this side. Let's move over m y, and let's move over a x. All right. Then you multi. I mean, excuse me. You divide by m, so you get a c uh, minus y equals negative a x. And of course, to get m by itself, you're going to divide by this. So divide both sides by this. Let's just write it once. <coughs> excuse me. And then there you go. And that's the value of m. And again, don't forget if you have this is an answer, and you look in the back of the book, they have a x over x minus a c. Totally fine. Same exact thing. All right. Try one more here. This is a little different. Not that big of a deal, but there are four terms in this equation. So you're going to have to do this four times. But we'll treat it exactly the same, so pause and copy if you need to. And I'll go ahead and just put, you know, the ones are my denominators if they don't exist already. We're going to solve for P. Let me kind of circle that. Okay. All right, so the common denominator is just PY. So let's do this one first. Uh, the p's cancel, so we just have a 6y. Done. Nothing cancels on that one, so it's pyax. Done. And that's going to equal, and on this one, the y's cancel, so I have pm. Done. Plus, nothing cancels there, so I've got pyk. Okay. Well, it looks like I've got two terms with p on the right, so what I'll do is, even though it violates every... <laughs> feeling I get. That's the scientific name for it. I'll go ahead and put all the P's on the right. Okay, so I'm going to put PYAX plus PM plus PYK, and that's going to equal 6Y. All right, well, I'll divide by P. So I get YAX plus M plus YK equals 6Y. And again, all we need to do is just divide by this. So you can just, let's just write it once. So P is equal to YAX plus M over YK. That's your denominator. And then your numerator is 6Y. What that is, don't know, but it's a useful skill to be able to do to isolate one variable in case you're ever working on something in the future. You need to have, you need to have just that. It could be a budget. It could be a cost. It could be a, you know, per item. And it could be anything. It's nice to be able to go, okay, this one item as related to everything else is this, this, and that. Then you can start putting in numbers for other, other variables, and then you can kind of manipulate what you need. So anyway, all right, let's take a look at A and B. And uh, first off, try A and pause it and come back in a sec. All right, we're solving for M. I'm just going to go ahead and, you know, visualize my over ones, and then I'll put M times X as my common denominator. All right, let's work on this one first. M's cancel. I get 5x, done, minus, nothing cancels, mxay. Bloop. Okay, that equals uh, x's cancel, so I get mp, done, plus mxs. Okay, oh boy, this is tempting me again. Put all the m's on the right side. I guess I'll give in to my temptation. So anyway, 5x is on the left. On the right, we have mxay plus m p plus m x s. Okay, so let's see here. Pull out my m. And then I have x a y. I have p. I have x s. And that's going to still equal 5x. And then, of course, you just divide by this. So I'll just do it once. So divide by x, a, y, plus p, plus x, s. And there you go. There's my m. It is equal to that. Okay. All right. Go ahead and pause it and try b. What in the world? Why is this so much easier? All right. C over 1. And 
there's my x and there's my m. Okay, so we'll do this one first. X's cancel, I have m times m. All right, uh, this one is next, m's cancel, so I have xp. And then this is gonna be x, m, z. Okay, so this time I'm gonna go ahead and go over here, and I'm gonna go, I'm moving the m squared to the right, that gives me negative m squared. xp stays. Uh, X, M, Z comes over, becomes negative. Uh, X, I pull out, and then I have P minus M, Z. That equals negative M squared. And I divide by both uh, P minus M, Z. So I have yoink, P minus M, Z on the denominator. X is equal to that. And here you go. Um, and again, don't forget, if your answer is this, and you check your answer in the back of the book and it says positive m squared, positive mz minus p, you're totally fine. Same exact thing, so no worries. All right, y'all have a great day. Attack the problem set. Get a bunch of them right if you can. 25, go for 25 or more. All right, see y'all next time.